I've actually had this fucking Gundam Wing. Technically, it's an Endless Waltz version of the, the kit. I've had this thing now for like seven years, it's about seven years, and it's become something of a reoccurring joke between me and my friends as to whether or not I'll actually ever finish building this fucking thing. I've gotten about this much done in the amount of time that I've had it, and I've told myself that I wouldn't buy another kit until after I completed this tall piece. The first Gundam model kit I ever owned was from the first line of Gundamwing models released in North America in the early 2000s. And I was fucking hooked. I loved how these weren't like the traditional toys I'd played with as a kid. I could put it together myself, they looked cool as hell, and scratch that itch of wanting to build shit and put things together. And in North America, I'm not alone, because the Gunpla hobby actually began right at the release of Gundam Wing. So today I wanted to take a brief look at the North American launch of Gundam Wing, or more specifically the launch of its Gunpla line. And I don't really have an agenda for today. I basically just wanted an excuse to talk about Gundam. I've got a few questions I'd like to ask you. So today we're going to talk about Gunpla shit and the release of the Gundam Wing line in North America. I'm fairly positive that clicking on this video, you already have a passing interest in Gundam, so I'm not going to insult your intelligence going over the intricacies of the Gundam series. Released in 1979, the Mobile Suit Gundam series helped to launch the giant robot genre of the 80s, spawning various sequels, television series, movies, plastic models, toys, manga, and other merchandise. Considered a timeless classic in Japan, Gundam has retained its title as the premier anime title today. Even if you haven't heard of Gundam, more likely than not, you've seen the poster child for the Gundam series known as the RX-78-2. And for good reason, as it's the most iconic Gundam from the series and is so popular in Japan, they've got fucking stamps of it. And funny enough, when the show first aired, it didn't actually do that well. That's not a joke either. Apparently the show's season had to be condensed down and ended up at 43 episodes in order to give it a satisfying conclusion. No, its popularity wouldn't actually begin until a little after the show's finale. Bandai had secured the rights to sell Gundam merchandise, and it's through this acquisition that the true popularity of Gundam would be born. On screen is a picture of the very first Gunpla ever produced, and it's of the RX-78-2, which is normally piloted by Amuro Ray, the series protagonist. This model was a traditional glue and paint model clit. <laughs> clit? <laughs> Uh, I try to get away from the porn shit, and that's the fucking first thing that I come up with. Okay. This model was a traditional glue and paint model kit, so it didn't have the highest level of articulation, if any at all. However, eventually Bondi would move to the more conventional method of gun club building we all know today. The Gundam model kits would prove to be so popular and lucrative for Bondi that they still own the merchandising rights today, and they continue to make a fuck ton of money off of it. With the popularity of these model kits plus reruns now running in Japan, Gundam was now on its way to becoming a cultural icon in the country. And this isn't to say that Gundam didn't have fans over here in the West, but it wouldn't exactly get its foothold here in North America until the release of Gundam Wing on Toonami. Toonami began airing promos all the time in the anticipation for Gundam Wing's arrival. From the Gundam universe, a new chapter in one of the greatest anime sagas of all time, Gundam Wing. And being a huge fan of Gundam, I hate to admit this, but at first, I actually didn't want anything to do with the show. But that's just plain nuts! Many of you out there are thinking, right? Just watching the trailers, uh, despite the fact the action was pretty fucking intense, it just looked like it was taking itself too seriously. However, Toonami was fucking slick because they decided to show both the first and second episodes of Gundam Wing back to back right before a major Dragon Ball Z episode. I actually think it's the episode where he turned Super Saiyan, but I could be wrong on that. And all I gotta say was, what a fucking smart move by Toonami to do that. Operation Meteor. Huh? Reporting. We're under sudden enemy attack. Sudden enemy attack? Who's attacking? I don't know. 
What is it? What's happening? And after this episode, I was hooked. I legit couldn't wait for the next episode of the series. At the time, I taped whatever episodes would air on Toonami, and I'd watch them over and over and fucking over again, until I eventually found out that VHS copies of the show were released. These right here are the exact same ones I had that my younger brother still has at his place today. I even included my 0083 VHS copy here, because after watching Gundam Wing and seeing the trailer for 0083, I was like, oh fuck, I gotta try this shit out too. That was the thing, at the time I was so young, I couldn't fucking differentiate the different versions of Gundam, the UC Sentry, the fucking G Gundam universe, all that shit. To me, it seemed like it was all the same thing. And man, I was so... Just being able to get into the series and find out that there's various versions of it, it was just... It fucking blew my mind as a kid. Now, the sentimental stuff is all well and good, but what does this have to do with Gunpla? At least for me, the VHS is where the Gunpla magic really began. Not only did they have previews of other Universal Century home video releases, but they had two amazing Gundam Wing action figure model kit commercials on there as well. And this was when Bandai began their major push into the US market with the Gundam model kits. It is kind of funny looking back on it, but yeah, they didn't refer to them as Gunpla, but action figure model kits, which in hindsight was a pretty smart idea. From a kid's perspective, it's a badass action figure that I can build on my own. And from the parent's perspective, this will keep the kid fucking occupied for a couple hours and out of my hair for a little bit. Before we go any further though, let's take a quick look at both of these commercials. The first is the straightforward Gundam commercial. Look at that fucking CGI. Earth is in trouble. I gotta admire the lighting in this, like, the lighting makes it look fucking sick. I almost wonder, like, did a lot of people that got into, like, the dioramas for, like, the Gundam model kits got it from this commercial? Because they're all, like, hanging out in the fucking valley and shit. Gundam Wing Action Figure Model Kits, only from Bandai. Great fucking commercial. And then next up we have the edgy late 90s, early 2000s one. This commercial always reminded me of the fucking Matrix. Especially like the Asian chick with the Epion. Level 3, 2 hours a night, 240 parts. The kid looks like, he looks like he's being held at fucking gunpoint. Level 5. Oh my god. Gundam, what's your level of commitment? And you got that fucking fucking Chad looking dude at the end who's like level 5 whatever fucking he said mvp goes to the fucking the hot chick with the was it the fucking the epion yeah hot chick with the epion she fucking wins this video i guess and i do have them both linked below so you can check them out in their entirety and without my little fucking commentary over it now the kits themselves were released in july of 2000 to coincide with the show's release on toonami however what's funny noted on the wiki is that these were repackages from the 1995 line in japan looking at the two picks side by side as you can see the only real difference is the lettering which is now in english now definitely correct me if i'm wrong here because clearly i don't have any of the original lines of the gundam wing model kits here and i couldn't find a scan of this online but i'm fairly positive that the instruction manual inside the North American boxes were all still in Japanese. Which is pretty fucking hilarious if that's the case because they went to all this trouble to change the fucking North American box cover, but then on the instruction manual they were basically like, ah, fuck it, they can figure it out. Now, these weren't the highest quality of models, at least by today's standards, but at the time they were pretty fucking awesome. And these definitely sold well, so much so that another line was produced after the initial ones. We started getting model kits from G Gundam, which was currently having its run on Toonami. And this is where that level system kind of comes into play from that edgy ass commercial earlier. The level system was devised to show the complexities of putting together the kits, starting from level one to level five. You could look at the initial released Gundam Wing model kits as kind of like level one model kits, where pretty much anything else after that that was like Gundam Wing endless waltz were, for the most part, considered level fives. However, the level system wouldn't last long. Eventually, Japan would start shipping their newly released high grades here in the West. The high grade name precedes itself because they were of a higher quality to even the level fives at the time, but were not insanely complex. These were again mostly the Gundam Wing Endless Waltz kits I would see in the stores. Eventually master grades, real grades, and perfect grades would follow suit here in the West. 
I don't think Gundam's ever surpassed its popularity here in the West post Gundam Wings launch, but I don't really think it needed to. Once the series was released, it was a game changer to a lot of people and basically hooked fans of the series for life. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I didn't really have an agenda for this particular video. It was basically just an excuse for me to be all nostalgic and shit. One of these fucking days, though, I will get off my lazy ass and finish my fucking Tall Geese kit. But it is not this day. But until then, let me know what your favorite builds are or what fucking Gundam model kit was the first one you ever had that got you hooked on Gunpla as well. Make sure to keep things light and rebellious, and I'll see you guys next time.